this map. This, this is not the internet version of the map, but they have access to this map over the internet. But the first thing is, what's the gross domestic product? And you can see from your sheet that I've asked, that I've chosen eight economies in Asia. I've chosen ones that they're reading about in the news a lot. And the discussion first is for them to have reviewed just one country for each of them, one of these countries. They've gone out to the internet, they've gone to a site called the CIA World Factbook, and they've researched the economics of that country. The reason they do that is because, and they did this last time too, the reason that they do that is because then when I show them that, they can say, hey, I did India, and tell us, tell the rest of the class what they happen to know about India, why India is this particular shade of green, this level of gross domestic product. The first question to them is simply look around. Take a look at this map. What do you know? What has the highest ranges of gross domestic product? What has the lowest? And these are the ranges that they've got. Um, easily, China has the highest. Russia's right in the middle, Mongolia, North South Korea, Japan's in the middle. So the homework discussion would, and the follow-up classroom discussion, would just be to talk about that. That's not a particular value, particularly valuable map, in my opinion. And that's part of the point of this. They hear the word gross domestic product all the time. They hear GDP. What makes this valuable is when we add the second, to me, but when we add the second set of questions in the second layer, this is per capita of gross domestic product. So China may have the highest gross domestic product, but per capita gross domestic product in China is less than $10,000. The high gross domestic product is obviously because of the high population. Per capita gross domestic product in Russia is higher. How high is it? Well, we can see how high it is by clicking on the I button. It's actually only 11,100. Students always want to know what the richest country in the world is when they do this thing. You guys know what it is? It's pretty um, oh, you're going to guess? You, you, yeah, United Arab Emirates. The United Arab Emirates? It's actually, it's actually Bermuda. Bermuda? It's actually Bermuda. All of the extremes are always on the tiny little islands. <laughs> the last question, which is on the back of your, of your sheet, is where, if you choose, and I chose, you can get into more critical thinking. It says, notice you can see both gross domestic product and per capita gross domestic product together. The countries with high GDP generally also have high per capita GDP. How about low and low? Do you discuss any relationships you see? What's fascinating about this is, uh, is how reluctant students are to say they see no relationship. You know, they look and they look and they look and sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. Again, the idea in economics is that students hear something like gross domestic product, per capita gross domestic product. And in a standard economics textbook, they even have graphs or tables that show maybe nine or ten countries. But they don't, they get some, such a much clearer view of what's going on if you can just show them all. But to quickly show you a map that I'm really excited about using with my microeconomic students. This map is related to global warming and the Kyoto Protocol. And in microeconomics, we have a chapter on environmental economics. And of course, the Kyoto Protocol, as you know, is highly controversial. The U.S. did not sign it. Most of the rest of the world did. So what I made was a map that the first layer is simply who signed it and who didn't. Now, I could turn on country names, but I don't usually unless I zoom in. Um, who signed it and who didn't, with who didn't being in yellow, and who did being in green. So this one already sort of surprises them. Um, because the only other industrialized country, really, that didn't sign was Australia. Um, we've got China not signing. We've got parts of Africa not signing. But then the second question, or there's actually a lot of questions around the Kyoto Protocol, um, but another real interesting question is, okay, 
So all these countries signed the Kyoto Protocol. What are their requirements under the Kyoto Protocol? The assumption is generally made that everybody who signed the Kyoto Protocol has to reduce their CO2 and their greenhouse gas emissions. That's actually not true. In 2012, this is all going to be looked at again, but most of the developing world, what's in light pink, says that you have no requirements. The dark magenta purple have requirements to reduce. That's, of course, almost all of Europe and North America. The sort of a brighter pink, I guess that's maroon, the more magenta pink, have to maintain, and this is 1990 levels, by the way, have to maintain or even can increase their 1990 levels a little bit. Now this is 2006, so they're probably not, definitely not maintaining anymore because they've all, we've all gone much, we've, we've all, most of the countries have gone much higher since. So this is another interesting thing. Let's take a look at the countries that are signatories to Kyoto and aren't and how much they have and whether they've reduced or increased their emissions since 1990. Now remember, or know for the first time, that the Kyoto Protocol was signed not till 2005. And right now the latest data I have is 2004. Actually I just got the 2005 data so I'll be putting that in. But still this isn't a picture of what would happen after the Kyoto Protocol. It's a valuable picture because the countries who signed on, many of them signed on in the mid to late 1990s, and supposedly, you know, did have the intent in any case. But this is still real interesting. Um, what my students were interested in really is looking, we zoomed into Africa, we zoomed into the Middle East a little bit, and it was real obvious that the countries who had reduced, except a little bit in Europe, had reduced because they'd been in crisis. And we also did some clicking around on using the information button and said, okay, so how much has the U.S. increased between 1990 and 2004? We've increased by 18%. We did not sign the Kyoto Protocol. Canada has increased by 23%. Mm. Um, they did sign the Kyoto Protocol. So just making those comparisons are really interesting. We are committed at Mesa College to help any class that wants to integrate GIS. 